Hello, this is Lee Murphy, the artist behind Art by Lee Murphy and the creator of the artwork you see here on this channel and on my website with the same name, artbyleemurphy.com. This is another in the series of art philosophy and tips and tricks and things I wish I had known when I was first starting out as an artist that may help other artists in this on their same paths. This particular painting is an oil on canvas. It's 24 inches high, 36 inches deep. And it's an example of a genre or a type of um, subject material that I do pretty often. I, I may go off into other subject material, but I always come back to, um, I love drawing seashells because first of all, that unlike flowers, they don't fade and they're very complex subjects. And if you have the discipline to draw a seashell pretty well and recognizable, uh, most anything else is going to be fairly easy to draw. Um, when I say draw, I usually mean with any kind of materials because I do believe that drawing is a fundamental between behind everything uh, that you use to make art with, whether it be painting or pencil or even sculpting or even uh, environmental art. Um, you basically, I, I look at drawing as a way of describing how we bring our inner dialogue with ourselves to our own consciousness and of that of others. And it says, I think it's a great nonverbal way of uh, communication and actually can even be used as a way of critical thinking. Anyhow, back to the subject material. Let's call this, I kind of call these my jumble paintings. And it's also an example of how I use realistic material, realistic subject material in a, an abstract manner. And it just is a great way to fill the space and organize just how I was feeling about the, the visual stimuli that was coming in. I'm not trying to say anything with this artwork, not in the way of a lot of people do with commentary or feel like they have to have some sort of grand message of their work. Sometimes it just groove on the way the light bounces off and through things and that's okay. From a practical standpoint, this is an example of using a limited color palette and limited shapes to have a dynamic form because you don't have to have every single color on the palette to make a worthy painting. Well, I would say worthy is probably not a great term for it, but a good satisfying piece of artwork. Um, this is co coming here with a orange and blue complementary color dominance. And there's a, this is a fairly good example of a trick that I learned when it comes to trying to get the most out of a simple subject material. Well, not terribly simple, but um, something that's not terribly complex when it comes to colors and values of ranges of values is to use warm shadows and cool highlights, which is usually the opposite of what a lot of people do. Cause when you think of shadows, you think colder, darker colors, but like I said in a previous video, something that, something that makes that can make an artwork a lot more successful in its execution is to know the rules of how things are normally done and then is knowing exactly why they're done and using your own judgment on how to break them. Um, using warm shadows and cool highlights is one of them. But back into the series of the philosophy on art, this one I am using as a example of or a lesson in what I learned about selling art through the major auction houses. And I'm not sure how I'm going to title this video because it's kind of a tricky subject. Uh, just as what I said in the video about getting your art into art museums, the best way to do anything is pretty much ask somebody who really knows. So a while ago I decided to get up my courage and I looked up Sotheby's website found a phone number of, and the name of somebody to contact and I just picked up the phone and asked. It was as simple as that. Uh, and apparently the nice lady who answered was, she was very patient and very kind and very clear on what she told me. So uh, my guessing is that she gets these kind of questions a lot from artists. So my question to the Sotheby's representative was, I would like to sell my art through Sotheby's auction house. How do I go about doing this? And her reply stuck with me because it was kind of catchy. She goes, sure, we'll sell you art if you have an auction record. Record, you know, Basically, if we can sell your art at auction if you have an auction record. And that's kind of like the 
uh, the quandary that people trying to get into the job market are so that sure we'll hire if you had experience but if you don't have experience you don't get hired so I had to pick that apart a little bit more um, I've since learned that the art auction circuit on that level on the major auction houses is something that most of us artists are never going to interact with it's an uncomfortable truth but there it is. I mean, if you can't identify a problem honestly and clearly as possible, how can you handle it? So, to dig down more into that is uh, art at that level is a commodity. Even when they, the Sotheby has different levels of, and the major auction houses do have different levels of art auctions that they sell. The big ones are in the high season and the evening sales, and then they'll also have ones in the morning, and they'll have ones that are not online. Uh, but even still, even the lowest tier of art sold through an auction house like Sotheby's is some place that most of us are never going to get to. Um, it's kind of a closed circuit because at that level, art is really more a commodity than it is art. Uh, this is another one that I'm going to have to probably do a more deep, in-depth video on when it comes to the philosophy behind it. But this one will pretty much suffice for um, basically... Uh, this is what it, one thing that that triggered me to talk about this is I was seeing a very dishonest, disingenuous um, sales promotion for an artist professional development course, and the tagline was basically right in the, the height of the COVID disaster last year. Um, this particular art trainer was saying, "Let me build your career." Sotheby's has, has sold. 19 million dollars worth of art. People are buying art like crazy because they're staying home. I'm like, well, yes and no. It's never that simple. Uh, my point being with Sotheby's, a 19 million dollar sale is no big deal, depending on what the scope of the work was in there. In some ways, it could be a disaster. In doing a little research, the market has been down, so I didn't like how certain characters in the world are playing on the desperation of artists to try to give them hope in places where they may not be prepared or even want to go. So, once again, um, now the best I have been able to pick this idea apart, pick this problem apart when it comes to me as an, a living artist wanting to sell my art through the major auction houses and seeing that closed loop system. Um, some possible ways around that are if you happen to have collectors who are at that level of buying and selling through major auction houses, they may agree to consign one of your pieces from their collection through the sale. Uh, and there is some good and bad of that too because it's a whole industry. That world is an entire industry and it's like the stock market. When an artist's work is consigned to sale, through their uh, program or their their house it's like everybody else who owns a piece of that artist's work has a vested interest in seeing that work sell for as much as possible so when you see a painting by artist x come up for sale at a major auction house what we generally don't see is all the work that had to go in behind it through vetting out the artist um, the condition report how much it sold for in the past um, the trending of the arts artist sales work, whether it's up or down, uh, they'll actually sometimes if an artist's work looks like it's trending on a downward uh, valuation scale, the people who own that art will sit on it and or you know hold on to it until the market changes, just like with a stock or anything like else. It's a commodity. Uh, this is one thing we don't really understand when, or I didn't understand when I naively called the Sotheby's representative and said, "Hey, I want to sell my art through the auction house." Um, so yeah, there's an awful lot of legwork and an awful lot of time and effort that has to go into preparing this work to make sure it sells for the maximum amount and stays at a higher or increasing value. Uh, it's You have an entire industry of auction people whose livelihoods depend on that. Uh, recently, I don't know that this is a great idea, but once again, this is their world and not mine, where it used to be that auction houses would take a buyer's and a seller's premium, which means if you sold a penny for $1,000, uh, the seller would have to keep, to give up part of that price, and then the buyer would have to pay a percentage of the sales price. So, you know, it used to be a 10%. Uh, if I were to buy a painting for $1,000, I'd have to pay, pay $110, excuse me, 
$1,100 plus sales tax and everything else. Uh, now that's gone up to, in some places, 30%. So it should be interesting to see how that goes, how that turns out. I don't think it will end well, given my experience with how galleries have taken their commissions up to uh, an average of 50% of the sales price of an art, a piece of artwork, sometimes even more. But that's, once again, that's fodder for another video. Uh, back to the idea of wanting to get one's artwork in the um, auction house sales pipeline, there is another way around it, but it once again takes an awful lot of work. Uh, most of these auction houses and a lot of museums and a lot of higher end galleries will go to places like uh, askart.com and I think there are other competing sites, and that's their first step for vetting out an artist to see if they want to represent it or see what the price, everything you want to know. And like I said in another video, uh, there are very concise guidelines for how you list your artwork in such places. First you start with height, then you start with width, and then you go with depth if you need to. Uh, they also have areas for average pricing, and they generally go price per square inch, which is kind of strange, but if that's what they want for you to list your work there. Uh, once again, like with the auction houses, it's difficult for an artist to say, hey, I just want to get my artwork on art, askart.com. Uh, generally, you need an intercessory person like a curator or a gallerist or somebody in the world already who will basically sponsor or mentor you through the process of, and give you some sort of endorsement by their cooperation with getting your work listed on there. And it's a very involved process. I've only known one living artist who did it. And it took him about a year and a half of constant work with an experienced um, retired art museum curator and gallerist to walk him through it and get everything vetted out, um, you know, entire list of the catalog raisonné of your work, um, even to little details of all the examples of way you've ever signed your work. So you look at it from a standpoint of a hundred years from now when you're dead and gone and somebody finds one of your artwork how can they verify if it really is yours? Uh, so it's one thing to look into. You can, you can find all these parameters online and decide if it works for you and realize you don't just say, hey, I want to sell my artwork and boom, there it goes. Uh, like anything, it takes a lot, of, a lot of unseen effort, a lot of preparation for it. And this may or may not work for you, but at least now <laughs> looking back, I know a little bit about it and it may work for me in the, in the future. Um, so that is one more thing in the art world that I didn't know about before when I was first starting out, and hopefully it may help someone else. Thank you for this. For uh, <laughs> I'm still working on my outro here. Uh, I would say thank you for seeing this video, and I hope it was of help.